There we go. So we should be able to get started here. So Team Secret, very solid team. Um, all right. So here we go. We got um, this roster, Sad Knight and KV1. Knight, when he came onto the scene, um, I had actually heard from a couple players. So um, Knight, he was actually known as kind of the scrub killer or first killer of sam when he but uh, before he turned 15 and the once he turned 15 he was grinding na ranked and i believe actually na in-game tournaments actually um where he played against a couple pros when the pros were really grinding those in-game tournaments of course kv1 he is a top tier 1v1 player um on use servers from south america um i believe he's on uh, i believe in recent in recent months he's not been able to get as many wins in ones but when he first burst onto the scene, he was really known for his kickoff and being all so overall super, super solid. All right. So, and then of course, sadness at the last major, they managed to really do so well in offense. On offense, the mechanics are really showing up. He's a KBM player like myself, and he's continuing to really show up as a as a top tier player. All right, so it looks like we're good to go. I think I'm done messaging. So let's get started. So looking at Secret, they've had a bunch of good recent performances here. So here we go. So we got, um, of course, third to fourth um, at the Major. They got third to fourth in the Major. They won the Winter Open. And then they lost in Game 7 to NIP in the Regional 3 Grand Final. Overall, these are very solid players. And it should be fun to see how they end up doing here going into this major and which is already in um, a little less than three weeks but overall it should be fun to see how they do and let's get over into the third regional so secret they made top four but not a lot of people are actually believing in secret um doing it again or making it far again which going on south america's track record here in the last four lands they've gotten a top six a top six and then a top four at the World Championship, and then a top four at the Fall Major. So expecting Secret to get anything less than top eight, I feel, is a disservice to them, unless they just run into a really solid team. Which is why, if we go over to my initial predictions, right here I have the I have Ground Zero beating Liquid here round one. Secret, of course, beating Gaming Gladiators. I think Gladiators are actually a solid team, and it's round one. So round one, anybody can win. And uh, if we remember, the Winter Major is actually where um, APAC actually won their first game as well. Um, granted, that was Detonator at the time, but then I have Secret going on to beat Ground Zero in Game 5. Ground Zero probably going to be hyped about their first win, um, but then Team Secret, they're just a solid team, and um, I do think uh, I do think um, Secret, will, Secret will, be the <laughs> will be the first Sam team to actually beat an OCE team here in a little while. Um, although we did remember Secret did lose to Renegades at the Fall Major, we do have to remember that. So this match could go anyway, and honestly, this group overall, I think the this group is the, is the least predictable group in terms of who's going to be at the top. I think it's the most predictable in terms of who's going to be at the bottom, but in terms of who's going to be at the top, this is definitely the least uh, least predictable group because Liquid they have shown to be inconsistent, um, and in, especially in first rounds. So let's get into this one. So then I have Secret barely losing out to Liquid. But even though I have, uh, I just had the 2 1 here for all three teams. Ground Zero narrowly, I think Ground Zero narrowly um, get on the top here because we got 8 5, 8 and 5, 8 and 6. So just on game differential alone, we see um, Secret, uh, since they lost one game to Gladiators, are going to be out. And then they compare the head to head. Versus these two teams. And then Ground Zero, I had them running round one. So that's why Secret go out in third here. But it could very easily be with Secret in first. It could be Liquid in first here. It could be Ground Zero in first. Honestly, I don't know who. And then um, I do have them ending up... Loot plan they do end up playing against FaZe here. But this could be a Liquid versus FaZe. This could be a this could be a Ground Zero versus FaZe. Like, honestly, we have no idea. 
I have no idea which one of these teams, like, like I said, Group C is probably the least predictable group, uh, in my opinion. Like, Ground Zero could go one and two here. Um, Secret could go one and two. Liquid could go one and two. Or they could all go two and one. We can see any of them go three and oh, if I'm being completely honest. So, it's definitely a, um, so it's definitely going to be a very interesting um, round of matches here, no matter how, how things go. All right, so let's get started. So as we start, as we talk about at the beginning of every single stream, we want to make sure that we're going over the likes of what we're going to be looking for when analyzing a professional team. Because, of course, I can't just coach a team as I normally would say if I was in a, in a replay review with them. Um, but what I can do is at least layer out a couple basic ideas that we can ensure a team is able to do. And, of course, I'll be able to just use my normal analysis of teams, be able to tell what the individual mistakes are. But normally, all mistakes in Rocket League are a variation of two concepts that aren't done properly. One is possession. So far, we've only had one actual team fail at doing possession, and that team is um, is G1. And then there's only, there's been a couple players that, when they're under pressure, they can kind of give away the ball sometimes. Um, one of those players is JNaps, another one of those players is Ocalid, and um, as of yesterday, Archie also had this issue, um, where individual players tend to not be as good at maintaining possession. But in regards to the teams, most teams have the idea of possession down. But what is possession? Why is possession necessary to the high level game? Well, possession is necessary to the high level game for a couple of reasons. But the big main reason is necessary is if in order to score a goal in Rocket League, what do you physically need? You physically need the ball, correct? And if you need the ball, aka possession, why should you ever give away possession if you kind of need it to score the goal, right? That's the main logical premise behind that. Normally the main argument against this is, well, what if you have zero boost? Well, even if you have zero boost, you can still lose a 50 back to your teammates, which pros should be fairly comfortable with, and then we're still maintaining that team possession, right? And honestly, sometimes you can still win a 50 and maintain possession going down the field, especially if you're really good at low boost Rocket League, as well as low boost 50-50s. And it's a very solid game um, over, and it's a very solid um, understanding of 50-50s that allow pros to be at the top. Um, but also outside of that, what the next argument, of course, naturally, is, well, what if your teammates don't have boost? Well, that means they kind of fail to do their job. If you're trying to position yourself, you have two players here. And if w at least one of them didn't grab pads on the rotation back to defense to fill in that support role, then um, I'd say that's a, that's a, a failure on them and not on the idea of possession. You should, of course, be able to trust your teammates to be supporting you in the rotation with boost as well. And overall, that should be that's that's the main reason why possession is uh, is done. But outside of this, what is the next thing? So we talk about possession being the number one thing. What's the number two thing? Number two thing is the three necessary areas of the field. Oh, there we go. Of the pitch. There we go. The three necessary areas of the pitch. Which, if you guys shown up throughout the last couple of days, you would know the three necessary areas of the pitch are the person on the ball, the person on support, and, of course, the person applying off-ball pressure. Now, um, keeping that in mind, we can, we can actually write these down. The three necessary areas are the person on the ball, the person supporting, And the person applying off-ball pressure. These are the three necessary areas of the pitch. Now, I think, everyone, we understand the ball person on the ball is the most important because he's the one trying to get possession or keep possession, correct? So keeping that in mind... Here we go. So keeping in mind um, possession uh, for a ball guy, we can just give the first, we can just call the ball guy first man, right? And what is support? Well, support is supporting a teammate close behind facing forward. And the reason why you start from behind when supporting your teammate is your ball cam's here, right? You can see the actual part, of, we can actually see the pitch, 
correct? And since so we can see the whole pitch, we can see if that midfield is open or not. If the midfield's open, we can go there to cover the pass. But even if the pass is not there, we can go, go over back to cover the 50. And if we start from behind, we're naturally covering that 50 as well. But we're giving one player the ability to cover one job here. And what this allows is a third person to apply off-ball pressure. Um, but overall, um, I, why doesn't the mid guy? Why can't we just do something like this? Third man behind, second man mid. This is how Rocket League actually rotations used to actually be. But looking more at this, um, looking more at this in depth, what are we missing? Well, we're missing the off-ball pressure, sure. But we haven't really gone over why that's necessary. We'll get over that in a second here. But when we start here, we actually can't see if the midfield's open here. Especially if someone's rotating back. Even if we flick our camera, we might not see them, right? So if we ask for a pass, giving our teammate that option, and he passes it, and he intercepts that, that's on, that's on us, right? But also outside of that, when we think about this person here... He's only necessary. He's only useful if we actually do pass it to him, right? If we end up solo playing, we're useless to the play. If we lose a 50, he was useless to the play. And in Rocket League, being such a rotational game, like this also doesn't really look very rotational, right? We just have three players pushing up the field in regards to Rocket League. Now, this can kind of be made up for if the ball doesn't get passed to him, he can rotate behind. But also just makes it so we have one player not being as useful as possible. Look, if we draw the sphere of influence here, his sphere of influence is just this whereas the person on the ball his fear of influence is, is in front of him and of course the third man is as well but keeping this in mind look at the area of the field we're only covering this part of the field we're completely rejecting this part of the field correct so keeping that in mind we want to make sure we want to make sure that we're maximizing the individualism of these players so this is fixed by starting with second man close from behind because here we can actually see the midfields open in which if, if it's not open, then we could just stay behind covering the 50. And then if it is open, we can go for the first pass. But even if the pass doesn't come, we can still fall in behind. We're maximizing the usefulness of our support player here. Instead of having two players cover one job, of course, the person on the ball, he's always going to have the most... He has possession, so he's going to be doing his job. This means the third man now, whenever he's in front of the play, can apply off-ball pressure. Right? So we have essentially the whole field covered here with all three players. Correct? So keeping that in mind, that's why having second start from behind is so important. Now, why? But you're saying like, well, can't second man if he doesn't receive pass go for a demo here? Technically, no. And the main reason why is when we look at something like this. If we go for a demo like this, we have to keep in mind there's a flow to of both teams' rotations. Our team is flowing in this direction. Our opponents are flowing in this direction. So we are going to be going into our opponent's flow, which individually, it's a lot easier to avoid someone who's going in the same direction as you. Um, but also, we're going into the flow of our, our teammates, which means we're going to get in their way. But also, think about it like this. There's four people in this flow and two people in this flow. And if the whole reason why these flows are opposing is to stop one another, then four on two, logically, where do you think that ball, that where the ball is most likely going to spill out? It's probably going to spill out towards the side with less people right so that's just a, a more of a natural way of looking at it more of an analogy but even thinking about it like this we're just getting in our teammates way while at the same time making it the other team making it easy for the other team to avoid our demos and avoid our off ball pressure right so keeping that in mind that's why we want to make sure when we are playing rocket league we need second man can't just start from here because one the ball cam issue can't see if someone's there Number two, we're only useful if it's a pass. And three, we have no off-ball pressure in terms of a team perspective. So that's why second man's able to start from behind, see the entire pitch, cover the middle, cover the 50. And of course, since he can see, he can see if the midfield's open and go there. But if not, fall right back. This allows whenever the third man's in front of the ball to do that. But of course, just like we just talked about, the third man can't turn back into the play. That's why the third man's end destination in any rotation is behind second man. But also, since he goes behind, eventually this teammate will lose the ball back to him, right? In which we automatically will have a second man and an off-ball pressure the instant that ball is lost in a 50-50. But there we go. That's why we have all, we have all three jobs. So that's why we have support starting from behind. But why is off-ball pressure necessary? Well, what happens if we don't have off-ball pressure, right? Well, that essentially means we're instantly rotating back whenever we're in front of the ball, right? Which means we're only covering about this part of the field, right? And thinking about it another way, we're giving it the other, the other team... A majority of the field or over two-thirds to be honest so keeping that in mind think of a question like this would you want to give g2 esports two-thirds of the field to do whatever they want probably not right would you want to give team secret two-thirds of the field to do whatever they want 
Probably not. Would you want to give players just like Sadness or Janeps or First Killer or Daniel or Zen or or uh, excuse me, a tower, any players like that, would you want to give them two-thirds of the field to do whatever they want? Probably not, right? That's why off-ball pressure becomes necessary. Because even if you don't get demos, you're stealing boost. And if you're on the other side of the field, that's a blindside pass because other team, they can't see you, but they know you're there, so they have to be wary of you. But also on top of that, even if you um, don't get demos and you just drive through them, it forces them to try and avoid you and try and stay in position. So there's moments in time where even if you don't get the demo, they are out of position. Plus, you're just not giving them time to think as well. But that's why we're looking at possession and, and um, the three air necessary areas of the pitch when we're looking at pro teams. And when we look at Oxygen yesterday, individually, we saw Archie had issues with possession when under pressure or nervous. Honestly, he could not be nervous and just under pressure, he gives away the ball, which is a fundamental under misunderstanding. But in terms of Oxygen, they actually understood this structure and adaptation. They're able to fill in all three jobs because those three jobs all have a priority. Ball guy is the highest priority, support guy the next highest priority, and off ball pressure the third highest priority. So they understood that priority and they filled it in as quickly as possible. But they also mixed in a lot of really good passes. Their second man here is really good at recognizing when the midfield is open here. And then, even if it was kind of covered, they're so good at passing, they were still able to get a good shot or at minimum get a 50 to keep it on the offensive end. That's how good auction were at passing. There we go. But auction, they also have a. Uh, but sometimes they don't understand um, the, the importance of making sure those three jobs are filled in at all times. So sometimes instead of filling in support, they'll just rotate back grabbing big boos, which, which is an issue. They're also bad individually at avoiding demos, so that was kind of hurting them. But Secret are a completely different team. But as we've no seen throughout all these replay reviews... When we look at Team Secret, KV1, Saddest Knight, like, they could have same individuals. For example, Archie, his issue with reading the play is the exact same issue as Amon. And that was back in Day 3, in terms of reading the play. But also, Archie adds on his issue with, um, with giving away possession when under pressure. And when you keep that in mind, with issues of keeping of giving away possession, Ahmad, not Ahmad, Ocalid also had a hard time keeping pre possession under pressure so archie kind of has the combined individual skills of ocalid and Ahmad. but the team overall is a lot more dynamic that's a strength for oxygen they are not one dimensional and they still have a structure so keeping that in mind oxygen might should be able to beat um falcons but comparing to crr for example i mean excuse me complexity when with crr on that team there's a little bit less individual skills um about the same amount of strengths and a little bit less weaknesses so complexity should be able to be um should be able to be oxygen but here we go team secret for sam let's get started with team secret but here we go so looking at Team Secret, they went 3-0 in groups, and they went 9-0. So looking at this group stage, we're probably not going to learn a lot. And um, there were forfeit games from no time. I think they had a disconnect. And then, yeah. Okay, so we're overall not going to... We're, we're going to look at Game 3 versus End Game, but I think that's all we're really going to see. It's Game 3 versus End Game in the group stage. We're not going to... Since they are clearly better than a majority of their region. That's something that we do have to keep in mind. Um, so I believe they're group A. Do, 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 do. Secret versus Endgame. Excuse me. It looks like I did, I did get another message here. I'll make sure to message and answer it really quick. But here we go. Here we go. So here we go, players. Let's look at the stats here. So like we look at the stats, we normally want to see the demos inflicted versus the demos taken. So we can see here from KV1, even though he has the most demos taken on his team, he's still positive in demos, so that's fine. So, and honestly, getting demo only once a game is, is still fine. It is um it's still like a, it's good but he's also getting on average normally a, a little bit less than two demos a game so that's fine knight he's positive in demos and sadness still positive in demos so this is actually really good from secret they're positive in their in their demos inflicted to de taken ratio 
which is good. Now, they still don't demo as much as other teams, which could be an issue. Um, but they're also a lot more of a counter-attacky team. So maybe it's the type of thing where they get one goal by getting a demo, get the goal, and then they're able to pretty much hold on to the goal for the most part. Of the, for the most part. So we'll be able to see that. Let's look at average boost. So unlike Oxygen, they actually are better at, um, a little bit better at keeping an average boost up. Let's see about the stolen big pads. Sadness has a decent amount. Knight has a good amount. And then KB1 still has an okay amount of stolen boost pads. Um, but even looking at that, um, we could definitely tell they do. And they have even they have a little bit better small pads as well. Actually, um, they actually aren't as good at, at grabbing small pads. So they're able to maintain their boost level at a lot higher pace um, compared to, say, Auction yesterday. But they also have issues with only... Uh, it looks like Sadness is their more of their pad player. But he's also grabbing a lot more of the big pads. So KB1 and Knight could have a little bit more issues on the boost side of things. But even then, they still have a high average boost count. So who knows? Well, I guess we'll see that in the stats. And then the last thing we want to look at is the ground stat. Uh, looks like everyone in this lobby has a really good ground stat. Now, what we look at with ground stat is normally we want to see a little bit above 50. Because if it's that lower than that, normally it means players are too pre-jumpy. Now, there are some players that end up lower than that and are still okay. And one of those players is Itachi. Itachi is actually really good at pre-jumping and getting the ball 100% of the time for the most part. So, um, that's why him having a lower ground stat is fine. For example, some players have a higher ground stat, but then it could mean hesitation. So, there's kind of a fine line between those two things. And looking at average speed... Um, Secret tend to be a little bit fast, uh, aren't as fast as some teams, but um, a little bit faster than Auction were in some of their games yesterday. But we are going to look at, uh, probably look at game two, actually, now thinking about it, because game three, um, da, 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 oh, got to make sure Rocket League's open. Uh, that would definitely um, help a little bit. <laughs> but here we go. I just showered, but I don't know why. It feels like my mouth is always really dry when I get out of a shower. It also doesn't help that I probably that I talk all day <laughs> doing a stream like this or commentating or coaching or anything like that. Um, but overall, it should be a good, fun time. Oh, I think we're loaded in. Yep. Oh, we're not playing ranked. Okay. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Borderless. We'll switch to 60 FPS. Apply. There we go. All right, so now we should be in a good spot. Let's look at the stats here. Let's look at game two of Secret versus um, Endgame, which is probably the closest match Secret had in the group stage. Now, why are we looking at a group stage? I'm sure that's the thing that most people look at. Well, the thing that we've learned here, um, I personally already knew this because, uh, of course, I wouldn't have start, started this um, deep dive analysis if I couldn't do analysis on stream like this, is when we look at a Rocket League team, normally you don't get more mistakes as you get more nervous normally the mistakes you already have tend to get ju just tend to get bigger um as you go through um as you go through a tournament for example so honestly even if we got scrimmage games from secret we'd probably be able to see the same weaknesses in their gameplay uh, which tends to go into and, and which will tend to show in the group stage the group stage weaknesses will tend to get bigger going into the quarterfinals which will get bigger in the semifinals which will get even bigger in the grand finals but we'll start here with knight and let's see how it overall goes so we're just seeing right off the bat a pass up field to knight knight trying to maintain possession so here we go. So right off the bat, we're seeing he's rotating out. Now, is it the end of the world? Let's see. Uh, I do want to see. Because one thing we're looking for, we're looking for that ball guy. We're looking for that support guy, an off ball pressure guy. So Knight, he does go for a bump of sorts, but he's rotating out But he's rotating out early. He is going for a big boost. That means Sadness won't have a support player. And I think that's what we'll end up noticing here. I think KV1, he ends up... I lost the ball. Where? Where's the ball? Uh, I think the ball is behind these nameplates here. But KV1's the ball guy here. And we have Sadness filling in support. So since Knight is rotating out really far here, what that's in, what's, what that's going to mean is Sadness, when he becomes the ball guy, KV1 won't be able to apply off ball pressure as much as he wants to because he'll have to fill in support as Knight fills in behind them. So they'll get right back into a line, like, which is okay. But since we don't have... But since we don't have that off-ball pressure being a really prevalent part of their offense, we can see that they don't get as many goals as some other teams. 
And I think that's what we end up seeing here. KV1 ends up having... Look at that. KV1 has to rotate right behind Sadness. Now, as you can see, we're still in a good structure. But look, now Sadness, he ends up... So here we go. Since Knight is able to get back into the rotation, now we see Sadness is actually able to apply off-ball pressure, right? But, it all, but the whole reason why they weren't able to maintain off-ball pressure completely is because Knight ended up rotating really far out like this instead of filling in support behind sadness right so that's what that's one weakness we are but we are noticing they do have a structure which is really good we notice they are able to adapt really well but um how but it looks like they are a little big boost reliant which is very similar to actually oxygen esports um that we talked about yes it's actually i believe we could literally copy and paste oxygen we can copy and paste this part of oxygen in terms of they understand this really really well so we can put that for the strengths for secret. Um, so secret. I'm saying the basic structure of high level rotations and adaptation, which is good. But in terms of weaknesses, they are very big boost to rely, which forces teammates to fill in necessarily um, for a player that could have supported, which means off ball pressure is lessened as the players take support priority on off ball pressure. As you can see, this is exactly the exact same stuff that we're seeing for secret is exactly the same from oxygen. So like we said, some teams are a lot more similar than you think. But let's go looking at night again. Ooh. Ooh. So one thing individually that we normally want to look at with players is one that they're taking possession, which I think all three players are taking possession really well. Oh, that's actually a really that's actually a really good pass. So here we go. So we notice here that the passing option is open, so they go up mid for a pass. Let's see how they end up filling in right here. So right here, we're looking for KV1 to fill in a first man. Knight fills in second. And they use... A, okay, so it looks like Secret actually really good at noticing counterattack passes. Here we go. So Knight is going to apply off-ball pressure. But it looks like all three players understand the importance of off-ball pressure when they go there. So look at this. Just rotationally, we're seeing very solid stuff from Secret. The team understands the importance of possession. And ensures they never give away the ball for free. So that's one really good thing that we're. That's another good thing that we're noticing from Secret. Possession is a really good part, and Secret are also really good at recognizing when the midfield is open for a passing opportunity, which allows their offense to be more dynamic and less one-dimensional as you notice the only weakness as for the team we've noticed so far is just being big boost reliant <laughs> and sup abdiel welcome to the stream what's the secret well that's what we're trying to find out good sir oh this is the second time we've noticed um knight not be able to get to the ball here he um maybe yeah I will say it is a mystery there, but I'm going to keep looking at Knight just to see how if his reads improve. Because it could just be a one-time thing. Sadness loses the 50. Eh, it's a bad 50 from Knight there. I mean, it, it loses it back to his teammate, but they still get scored on. How does KV1 get... Oh, it looks like they get caught off guard. Sadness misreads it. So something we are noticing, actually, from South American players is some South American players um, are actually not the best at reading where the ball is going. So they instead react to it. But let's see if that ends up being an actual issue because hopefully Knight's supporting facing forward here. He knows the midfield's open, but right when he notices the pass isn't coming, he supports the 50-50. He grabs a boost. He fills in second. It's it's all right. It's not the most efficient rotation, but it's okay. He gets a great 50 there. He's trying to maintain possession. He gets a dunk as well. Let's see what he does here. What was this from KV1? That's the big question. So KV1. So we are not seeing, noticing unnecessary cuts in the rotation from KV1. So let's look at KV1 here for a bit. See if this is a recurring issue. Unnecessary cuts from KV1. So we, that there, the demo doesn't really do anything. Um, but it ends, it ends, ends up messing up the secret rotation more than anything. Oh, that's another misread from, from KV1, actually. So KV1, he should not, he, he's easily getting beat to that ball, but he still commits. So we're noticing KV1 individually has some issues um, in regards to 3v3. He ends up not being able to avoid the demo there, but that's not the end of the world. You can see a little bit of big boost reliance there. He wanted to go for it. 
Here he's supporting. Is he able to read his teammate's pass? He re okay, so he is able to read the 50 for the most part. So I think KV1 is able to read the play for the most part, but I think that was just a one time. Maybe it's 50 50 so he has a hard time, or if he's getting beat. Here we go. KV1 gets the beat over them. Back to sad. KV1 going to fill in support. Great possession here from KV1. It looks like it's another misread on the 50 50 from Knight. Um, just looking at this, we can just tell. Let's, let's look, look just to make sure, because he sees KV1 has the ball. And he just had no idea the 50 50 was coming there. We'll be able to notice if KV1 has an unnecessary cut at any point. Yeah, but Knight ends up misreading how that one's going to go again. Yeah, so it looks like we found an issue with K with um, Knight, where he doesn't he's not really good at reading where that ball is going to go. But his rotations are really solid. He knows where to go around his teammates. It's just when it comes to reading where the ball's going, he's a little bit slower than his teammates. Although, was that a necessary cut from his teammate here? Okay, if he wants to go for this ball, I think it was maybe a necessary cut from Sadness, but there's actually okay. Uh, but Knight, of course, misread where that was going anyway. So again, Knight was facing away from whatever is happening. Doesn't really know where the ball's going. So we are noticing very similar attributes here um, between Knight and Ahmad. Alright, it's going to be a good... Uh, here we go. Knight. Let's see what Knight should do here. So Knight should take possession here. That's good. Looking for the solo play. Now I'd love to see him go for some bumps in the rotation out. Yes, sir. There we go. Now he will go for the big boost. So he's a little bit late to supporting Sadness here. But luckily Sadness is good enough to maintain possession. Here he calls his teammate out the ball. Going for the double tap. So mechanics. Oh my goodness. We got we got to talk about the mechanics here. Uh, so mechanics. The mechanics. And confidence. Of Team Secret. Are fantastic. There we go. Yeah, this one continues. So I think we've cemented Knight has issues with reading the play. I'm just going to try and look at him for a little bit longer here. He does actually get a good dunk there. So I think what we should say is he is inconsistent with reading the play. He is not the best at reading the play. So I think that's very similar to actually a crew esports player. Um... Do, 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 do. Either too far away for support, overall lacking understanding, gives away possession for free when nervous, um, does not understand how to support the teammate either. Okay. Here we go. The team individuals react rather than reading the play, so it's not them. There's somebody who um, has issues with reading 50 50s. What player was it? I'm trying to remember. Because there's a play that's very similar to this. And to not fully read the play, which leads him to rushing positions. Also tends to not understand the necessity of possession. Um, the knight turn... Do, 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 do. Does not apply awful pressure, said rushes back to get boost. And to not fully read the play, which is in that are already covered by teammates. So, I think Dorito is actually very similar here um, in regards to Knight in terms of his issues. He does not fully read the play, which leads him rushing to positions that are already covered by teammates. And But he's also getting beat to the ball. So I think, you know, Ahmad might be the, the best person to cop to here. He also reacts to play on the beat. He's completely getting beat too. So this is actually a, very similar to what Knight's issues are. So here we go. We can write down this for Knight. His issues come from his ability to read where the ball is going. Instead of reading where the ball goes, he reacts to it. This means, first off, that he will be slower to some balls than players that read the play. Also, since he reacts to the play rather than reading, he goes for some balls he's completely getting beat to, throwing himself out of the play. Um, his issues come from t -t 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 his ability to... Yeah, overall, I think that's, that's what Knight's issues are. It looks like the music also stopped, so I'll fix that really quick. Go back to KB1 because we did notice some unnecessary cuts from KB1 earlier in the earlier in the replay. So let's try to cement that. Cement that as an issue. 
But he does apply off all pressure there, so that's good. Now let's see if he watches mid on defense. He doesn't need to. So there, he now, let's see, he's going to be ball guy. He, ball gets hit behind him. Ooh, close opportunity there for um, Wells. Now he's going to fill in uh, third here behind his teammates. Now he's going to be ball guy. But it looks like we've only not noticed one unnecessary cut from KV1. But for the most part, it looks like he is actually reading the play. He is rotating really well. So Brunovisky is actually doing, is doing a really good job here as a coach, or presumably is doing a really good job as a coach for Team Secret, because of course um, this is some like the they have a good structure of rotation, they have a good uh, adaptive rotation. Um, it just looks like there's a couple other mistakes we're noticing in their gameplay. That's making them not as good as, say, theoretically possible here for Team Secret. And I know I'm saying theoretically possible, but right now, at least um, coaches that really understand the high-level game should be able to know... Uh, should be able to know what theoretically is possible with their team. In Secret, they are theoretically able to get far better. Um, but so far, KV1 and Sadness, they are individually looking really good. We also we only noticed one bet. We didn't really look at Sadness that replay. But that's perfectly fine. Um, because Sadness, like if the, if I, because as we noticed with KV1, we know and Knight, we were watching KV1's POV. We noticed Knight's issues. We went when we were watching Knight. We wa we saw maybe an issue from KV1, right? And honestly, we didn't really notice anything from Sadness except maybe one cut that um I didn't really look into. But we'll go over to Crew versus Team Secret here. We'll look at, say, hmm, where they lost, they got blown out, or they didn't score a goal. So look at, look at game one, Secret versus Crew. I think that'll be good to look at. So this would be the quarterfinals. Um, Secret versus Crew. Here we go. And of course, we'll look at the stats as always. Let's see how the stats are. Let's look at the demos inflicted versus taken. So in terms of so here, um, they are actually negative on demos. Um, but here we go. KV1's positive and Knight's positive. So it's only sadness that's negative on demos. So, uh, But as you can see, they barely got demoed even then. Still one demo a game. So maybe sadness just didn't have any opportunities to score. Because like we said, they don't score a lot of goals. I mean, look at the goals here per player. There, there's not a lot of goals scored um, for, from secret. But as you can see, they still win. Um, pretty they still win Secret versus final form. I believe we haven't played. Uh, we played against them in the Regional two. Yeah, that's what it was. We did end up losing to them, but we had some close games Looking at average boost. Um, so it is lower than some other games, but looking at stolen big pads um, We still see a good amount of stolen big pads small pad count sadness tonight. So this is good KV1, a little bit less, um, but he also has an okay, but he also able to maintain his boost really well, too. Um, but, yeah, that's overall well and good, well and solid. Average speed tends to be just a little bit faster uh, of a game here for him. Secret, Knight, Sadness, and KV1. Um, a little slow for KV1, but that's pretty normal. Ground stat here, um, Knight, KV1, and Sadness all in a good range. So let's look at game one between Secret and Crew. I do want to look at Sadness here, since we didn't look at him last replay. Here we go. Sadness, trying to maintain possession. Gets a bump. A little bit of a mistouch there, but that's all right. One thing I like about Sadness, he's a fellow KBM player. Look at that. I'm just going to look at it for myself, because I'm actually horrible at shooting when it comes to when it comes to being a KBM player. And that was actually a pretty good shot. He just goes for a straight-up side flip and has still speed. I'm always trying to speed flip, but that was just a trade up side flip. But here we go. Possession from Sadness. Pass the ball mid to his teammate. Great passing opportunity there. Here we go. Go to support behind Knight. Great read from Sadness. Here we go. Ooh, great shot there. Sadness does rotate out for a big boost. So this is a team issue. It's not an individual issue. Sadness probably called KV1 off there and KV1 still touched it. But 
Sadness. He just tries to pop it over both of those players and keep possession. A little bit of a missed mechanical touch. Maybe it would have been safer to keep possession there, but it's overall not the biggest issue. It's not... There we go. Now he's going to apply off-ball pressure. Once he realizes his teammate messes up possession, he ends up rotating cover in the middle rather than pushing all the way upfield. So his awareness of a pop-ball pressure is actually really solid as well. He's missing a couple demos, so honestly, it looks like Sadness is going for demos, but he's um, missing them. So that's more of a mechanical issue in regards to getting demos. He does kind of throw himself at the ball there. Overall, we're definitely seeing Secret are definitely a world-class team. Just looking at their rotations. Here we go. Back over to Knight. Now over to Sadness. Sadness, let's see how he takes possession here. I don't think he got the reset. Oh, he did, actually. That looked a little weird by how he bounced off the ball. Actually, thinking back on it, I, I can see how he got the reset. Never mind. Here we go. Back to third man. He's going to be second man now for his teammate. Let's see how he reads the play here. He reads the play really well. So actually, I do want to go back to Knight. Uh, I want to see if Knight does have, really does have issues reading the play. Uh, yeah, right after I switched to him. So I think it is cemented. Knight does have issues with reading the play compared to his teammates. Um, which his teammates seem to be very good at reading the play. So um, that's, of course, a little bit of a... Of course, compared to his teammates, he's very solid. Okay, he ends up to end up rotating really far out, but he's still able to get possession. We get to see these mechanics again. So those everyone who just thought Secret wouldn't be the best of teams, but Secret they're rotationally looking really, really good. Individually, they're looking solid as well. I think we're noticing Sadness is actually giving away the ball a little bit sometimes, but I think he was on zero boost there. So it's not the it's not the end of the world because honestly I think sadness is trying to maintain possession so here we go sadness calls off KV1 he gets possession as well Knight and uh so it looks like Knight is okay at reading the play but can't improve so um here we go so Knight his issues come from his um, ability to read where the ball is going um he is not the uh, instead of he reacts to it. Um, do, 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 do. Most, uh, um, he is okay at reading the play in some situations. So I think we can actually change this for Knight. Ability to read where the ball is going, he reacts to it. He does read the play in some situations, but when his team is under pressure or during a 50 50 he is not the best at reading so instead reacts to the play which makes him slower to the ball than players that that read the play this also causes some issues as he may throw himself at a ball he is clearly getting beat to. So there we go. It's a little bit different than Ahmad, for example, or say Archie, but the issue is still there. So let's look at KV1. We did notice maybe one time in the last replay that he might cut off his teammates unnecessarily. So this is a misread from KV1 as well. So I think we could write, we could do the same thing here. Um, so um, maybe all three of these players actually have the issue where under pressure they have a harder time reading the play. But honestly, I think KV1, that was maybe a, that was the first time we've seen KV1 mess up, something like that. So we should be good. Knight puts it out the backboard. No follow up just yet. KV1. See, KV1, he's comfortable with reading 50 50s and everything like that. So I think. KV1 it doesn't have an issue with reading the play. That, the difference between having a one-time mistake and having an issue. Having an issue is doing it multiple times a game, which we've seen from Knight. Um, like at the pro level, one mistake is sometimes even too much, and seeing one mistake a game from Knight is an issue. Whereas with KV1, we didn't really see an issue in the previous game. We saw it one time here, so 
His issue is it'll naturally get worked out just because I don't think it really is an issue. I think it was just a one-time mistake. Sadness here, looking for a shot, fakes it. Overall, good shot and attempt there from Secret. But Secret, honestly, are looking very foundational, are a really foundational team. And um, honestly, um, compared to how FaZe do in, our, in the deep dive analysis we do of them, I could honestly probably put them... Um, I could probably honestly put them in a spot where they could beat FaZe in a, in a best of five. So, who knows? This might... Who knows? Maybe my um, ladder predictions might completely change. There we go. Let's see if, how this kickoff goes and how it turns into a goal. When's the kickoff actually to the side? KV1 gets a complete possession. And then he just air doubles it all the way in. All right. <laughs> that was a team. We can add some more strengths to them. Great at recognizing the best way to apply off the ball pressure. Well, honestly, I'm not noticing any in individual issues from KV1 and Sadness that are like big, big issues. So that's pretty good for them. But here we go, Parabellum. They actually lost a couple of games to Parabellum, which is surprising. Um, we can look at game one, Secret versus Parabellum. Let's look at that. Of course, we'll look at stats. Let's look at see how the off-ball pressure goes. So Knight actually is negative in off-ball pressure. Um, but positive for KV1 and positive for Sadness. So maybe it was just... Um, it could have just been uh, maybe some of these demos were... Knight just getting de a double demo, for example, which does happen. Average boost tends to be act is actually lower in this match, but still, actually, for Secret, is actually okay. Um, it looks like Parabellum actually have issues with boost pads. Um, stolen small, stolen big pads here. Sadness with a good amount. Knight with a good amount. KV1 with an okay amount. And then small pads as well. Sadness, Knight, and KV1. They all have an okay amount of mini pads as well. Um, because it looks like, um, due to the stolen big pads of Secret, um, it's forcing the other team to actually grab more mini pads. So that's overall solid. Average speed, this is actually a really slow game, um, compared to others in South America. Looking at the ground stat, though, overall this is pretty solid. So, let's get into... All right, let's get into this. So game one, they end up losing. So let's look at it. How do they lose a game to another team? That We haven't really seen them lose yet. So maybe this is where we'll see. Maybe we'll see the KV1 one-time issue we saw from KV1. Because, of course, we're, we are looking for it. But as we talked about before, you know, team players don't normally get more issues as the tournament goes on. It's normally their issues that they already have, already have get worse. Great read from KV1. So I think this is something we can actually talk about from the team as a whole. Fantastic at, re at reading where the ball is going. AKA, AKA they are fantastic. Are great at at challenging the ball. There we go. We're actually getting a lot of strengths for Secret, and we don't have a lot of weaknesses, actually. So anyone who thinks that Secret were just a one-time team, uh, I would say guess again. Now, don't get me wrong. Depending on who they play against, they could lose. They could lose to other teams. Don't get me wrong. But if you're betting on Secret not doing well, I'd say that the odds are not in your favor. Great shot. Great pass overall. Overall, the awareness here from KV1. Fantastic. Is this a speed flip or a side flip? It might just be a side flip, honestly. Like, it's so weird seeing people side flip on shots for me because as a KBM player, I'm so used to holding W the entire time. Might not beat the top teams, but they are capable of doing it. Well, if by what we're noticing, individually, they are better than most players. As a team, they have so many strengths. The one thing we're noticing, though, is they're, they're, their passing isn't as prevalent as other teams. 
So um, that is one thing we're noticing is they kind of go for a more they go for more basic passes. So they're not one dimensional, but they could improve their passing game. That's one thing that they could do. Under the round ball. Let's see how this goes. Knight trying to support. He ends up getting beat. Oop, gave you one dice. As we can see, the rotations from Secret are fantastic. The only issue I see is them going for big boost, which against some, uh, which against the team that's not big boost or reliant can actually cause issues, especially if a team is a really good counterattacking team or a great team on offense, that um, Big Boost Reliance could actually create a decent amount of goals. We're well, seeing a couple of missed shots from, from Secret. This could have been a... We could be seeing Secret here be winning by a little bit more. Um, here we go. So far, we're seeing some good possession from Secret. They do end up giving it away there off a good challenge from Parabellum. Good force there from KV1. He didn't need to jump. So I think that is a weakness is... Um... I can't... Um, even though the players are good at recognizing, at reading the play... They still feel they need to jump to force the ball, which wastes some boost and throws them out of the play, which essentially means they need to drive challenge more to stay closer to the play. Overall, we can say their main issue is actually staying closer to the play when it comes down to big boost and and challenging the ball. At the end of the day, they're really good at reading the ball. They know when the ball's getting hit past them. Um, but if you notice, they're only letting the ball get hit past them if there's a teammate behind them, right? So that means they know where the, what's happening with the ball. It's just, uh, or at least Knight may have some issues with it sometimes. But overall, as a team, they are fantastic at being able to look at that. That's a great force high. And of course, we all know why we force high at this point. It makes it easier for your teammates to read. Here we go. Let's see what happens here. Knight going to maintain possession. Now, let's see how KV1 does. He ends up trying to pass the ball across. Ends up giving away the ball, but it's okay. Why we lose. Alright, Sadness pops the ball forward. Back to Sobral. Looks for the ball. But Secret, I believe Secret have made every LAN event since the Winter Major. So that's actually really, um, that's extreme consistency that people didn't even recognize back in the World Championship. Like, Secret are consistently... Like, they've been improving, they've been impro improving slowly but surely. But they've been consistent for a very long time. That's something that people don't net recognize. So many people feel, focus on the... I'm wondering if I can actually let the replay play Why? Yeah, here we go. It's like, some people don't realize about Seam Secret, is, or about Rocket League in general, is teams, they have a skill ceiling, they have their average, and they have their skill floor. A lot of Rocket League teams really focus on raising their ceiling. They want to raise their ceiling up as much as possible, but not a lot of teams focus on raising their average. Which you would think, okay, naturally, won't your average go up if your ceiling if your ceiling goes up? Not necessarily, because some people, some teams still have really low floors, but they don't focus on raising them. So if a team is peaking, they are really good because they keep raising that ceiling. But since they don't raise that floor, their average doesn't really go up. Their consistency doesn't go up. What a Rocket League team should focus on is raising that floor up as high as they can, which will raise their average skill as much as they can, which will actually inherently raise their skill ceiling as well. But since so many teams don't focus on raising that skill floor, they kind of get stuck. They, they end up being very cons inconsistent. So if we were to actually look at Team Secret's skill, if we were to actually write down these lines here for, for Secret, 
I would say Secret's um, floor is actually higher than most teams. And their skill ceiling is actually higher than some other teams as well. Not as high as some teams. But this means Secret's average is actually relatively well. Let's compare that to a team like, say, BDS last season. BDS had a really low skill floor when it came to the team. Online, though, mechanically and individually, they're so good that their skill ceiling is super, super high. But, like, for example, BDS, their average online was actually really high. But as you can see, their average is, like, kind of mediocre. Which is why, at LAN, we saw a lot of teams be able to beat BDS. But at the same time, if BDS were peaking, their ceiling is still higher than almost every other team. Or at least at the time. And let's say, compare a team... Let's compare, like, no, and normally North American teams, they have really high floors. But they also have low skill ceilings but it does mean they're very consistent but it does mean a peaking team is going to be able to win more and um for example and there are some teams with slightly better averages so they might consistently be able to beat some na teams a little bit more the only exception to this might be um gen g and phase right now gen g and phase they have really high skill ceilings um but phase individually are so good so phase probably have the highest floor and the highest ceiling um, whereas Genji have probably a slightly um, lower floor individually, just slightly, but then they have a slightly lower ceiling. But their average, for example, this if Phase's average is kind of like right in the middle, Genji's average is slightly above that because individually Genji are still really good. But not a lot of teams recognize on raising that floor, and as we can see here from Secret, their floor is really really high. That's something that's commendable about the team. Oh, looks like a little mess up here. Knight ends up getting bald. Sadness. Miss touches that one. Sad time, sad time. So a couple of missed touches. But I think we have recognized that Sad KV1 don't really have any individual issues um, to really speak from. Um, we can we can say... I think we can put this for anyone. Individual issues are team issues as well. So entered in weaknesses. So we can put that for them. We can also put that for AJG. Do we have anyone else that doesn't really have any individual skill issues? One of those players was Atomic, but we found something for him that was different. TRK as well. But okay, so we do have some, we have three players that we've analyzed so far that don't really have any weaknesses compared to the entire team. We're looking at their strengths, they have a decent amount of strengths. They still have some weaknesses, but for example, based on this alone, honestly, Secret could be expected to beat a team like Oxygen, if I'm being completely honest. Tomorrow, we're going to be going over, uh, we're going to give a break from an uh, emerging region. We're going to go over to Phase, the sec, um, the first C. No. No, we're going over Gen G, I think. Um, oh, no, we should go over the font. We're going to go over Phase. We're going to go over Phase. Uh, Phase Esports NA tomorrow. But all right, so 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 let's look at Secret one last time. Make sure we got everything under control. KV one, most of, all his individual issues are team issues. Um, Sadness his individual issues are also team issues. Um, Knight his issues come from his ability to read the, where the ball is going instead of re reading where the ball goes, you react to it. He does read the play in some situations. Just to clarify, okay, so we should say to clarify. In some situations, but when his team is under pressure or during 50-50, he's not the best at at reading. So instead, reacts to play, which makes him slower to the ball than some that than players that read the play. It also causes some issues as he may throw himself at the ball and he's clearly getting beat. Strength. Secret understand the basic structure of high level rotation and adaptation. The team understands the importance of possession and ensures they never give away the ball for free. Secret are also a really good team to recognize when the midfield is open for a passing opportunity, which allows them to be, to, to be more dynamic and less one-dimensional. The mechanics and confidence of Team Secret are fantastic um, as well. Great at recognizing the best way to apply off-ball pressure. Fantastic at reading where the ball is going, because they have great at challenging the ball. Weaknesses, they are very big booster reliant, which forces teams unnecessarily fill in spots, uh, fill in support when they could have been applying off-ball pressure. 
Um, even though players are really good at reading the play, they still feel the need to jump to force the ball, which wastes some boost and throws them out of the play. Which essentially means they need to drive challenge more to stay closer to the play. But there we go. That's Team Secret. And actually, I realized um, earlier in the day, I didn't really write down some strengths for some teams. For example, G2. We didn't really explain why. Um, we should put down here. Well, I was more focused um, using uh, playstyle is more focused on using passes. Actually, no, G2, since individually they don't really have much, they're not as dynamic. Um, <laughs> Which means the team is a little less one dimension. Uh, Dimensional. Ah. Dimensional. As passes can be from anywhere. And, and there we go. We're going to say it, which means the team is a little less one dimensional. There we go. But as you can see, strengths in G2, but in the individually, G2. Individ um, individually. The players are solid mechanically. So they're solid mechanically, but they're still not as good as some other teams mechanically. So I think that's the main difference that we have there. Um, Falcons, I think we're good on. Pioneers, I think we're good on. Yep, I think we're good. So thank you everybody who showed up to the stream today. It's been a pleasure. Tomorrow we will be going over phase. Um, but I hope you guys all enjoyed. Sorry for the shorter stream today, but I do got to go somewhere today. But honestly, we don't really have to look at anything else. We we pretty much have um, Secret um, down as to what we understand about them. But overall, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. And uh, talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace.